Today is Friday, and it's July the 1st, 2021. And we're reading again Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. <clears throat> it's my pleasure today to discuss the last of six special people who are balcony people in our lives. We all need them and are better for their interaction with us to move more passionately toward God and the use of our resources, skills, and talents to enlarge God's kingdom. That person is the pastor. Now, that pastor, the pastor in our life, is the tender person who comes alongside in the moment of exhaustion, need, and even emergency. Now, I want to make this clear. This is not necessarily an ordained or professional minister. In fact, my personal opinion is that most of the time, it's not a professional, but a person gifted of God with compassion who simply comes alongside us when we need it. In other words, what I'm saying, there are millions of pastors in the body of Christ who are not officially titled pastors. They are compassionate and they're moved with empathy toward us in the hour of our need. They know us. They care about us. These pastors help us make sense out of life when life has become confusing. If you look up the word pastor, it really means shepherd, one who feeds, one who leads, and one who protects. A pastor is a special friend like the rest of these special six people filled with energy and power to minister to our life. I've been a pastor uh, for a vast majority of my lifespan, and I've had many people pastor me. They've come alongside me in the hour of my need and ministered life when I seem to be running low. One such individual is, is Ray Smith, who has since gone on to be with Jesus. Uh, one time I got myself in hot water with my neighbor attempting to bless her. Uh, I was unable to explain to her what I was doing in tearing up part of her yard due to her being gone. She came home and I wasn't home and and to find that I had encroached upon her property, uh, maybe uh, six inches, uh, maybe a foot at the most. And, and I'd done so with a rototiller. And the reason I'd done so was because I had lightning strike a tree in my front yard and, and the roots of it spread out into her yard. And so I had got the tree removed and I had actually been pulling up all the roots because they were close to the surface and interfering with me reestablishing the seeding process. And and so some of the roots I pulled up extended into her yard, so I pulled them all out and was rototilling. And, and uh, when she saw I wasn't home, she called, the, she called Ray. Ray was the president of Open Bible Churches and happened to reside in the same community. How she ever got a hold of him, I don't know. And she gave him an earful about me. <clears throat> and Ray called, and he rebuked me. And he gave me a little instruction, and he told me to take care of it. He reminded me that I was in need of being the best neighbor I could be. So Ray both rebuked me and pastored me at the, at the same time. And I had a great relationship with Ray, and I was submitted to his authority. So with the Holy Spirit's help and the defeat of my flesh, I was able to be a blessing to my neighbor. So... When I got home and she was home, I went over to her and I told her the plan. I said, well, I'm just going to go ahead and go all the way to your driveway, which was only a couple more feet. I'm going to rototill it all up. I'm going to put new sod down in the whole thing. Now, I didn't get there in a, in a flash. In, in fact, to be honest with you, I walked five miles after Ray talked to me. And I, wasn't, I was upset that that my neighbor had, first of all, 
called the President of Hope and Bible to talk about me. And secondly, Ray didn't care what my side of the story was, and he just told me what I was supposed to do. Take care of it and be the best neighbor you could be. And I was upset about that. And I walked for five miles and I was telling God, boy, this isn't fair, this isn't right. And I walked two and a half miles in one direction and then I, by the time I got done telling God where life was at, I calmed down and I turned around and two and a half miles back home, Holy Spirit just worked on me and, and gave me that plan to just go ahead and go all the way to the driveway. <laughs> See, God used Ray to come alongside me in an hour of need when if my flesh had done what it wanted to do, there wouldn't have been really good results. Without the pastoring of my friend Ray, my flesh might have created a totally different story. There are people God's put in your life, they're pastoring you. They care deeply about you. They come alongside you in the hour of your need, maybe not like the hour of my need where my flesh was gonna get in control and probably create a big problem. But that could happen for you too. Or it's just a time when you're in grief or you're in sorrow or, or you're just discouraged about life and here they come, knock on the door. Oh, maybe they, maybe they bring a, uh, a light dessert or maybe they just come in with the word of God and they encourage you and bless you. Man, I'll tell you what, we all need mentor, disciples, affirmers, rebukers. We need those kind of people that encourage us who are balcony people that uh, pastor us and help us along the road. Some of those special people who intercede for us, partner with us. They take us to the throne of God. See, God's interested in your growing in relationship with him. And I think God, lots of times without our help at all, he puts those special people in our life, but sometimes we have to go look for them. So I guess the biggest question I have for you about this whole week is, will you be one of those special people for someone else? And I believe if you will be, you'll discover some of your needs just get met in the process of your meeting someone else's need. Oh, God, help us. You put us together, one another, so that we might one another each other and bless one another and encourage one another and lift up one another and at times correct and rebuke one another. Oh, I'm glad to be a part of your family, God. Thankful for the blood of Jesus Christ and the day that I repented of my sin and you deposited the Holy Spirit in me. What a glorious day. And now you surrounded me with a great cloud of witnesses to help me finish the race by laying aside every sin and weight which so easily besets me and looking unto Jesus. Help us all to do that today as we walk out this journey you put us in in the name of Jesus. Amen. Grace and peace today. God bless you. Have a marvelous day.